Well, good morning. It is uh, good to see you all and uh, good to gather together in a full room like this this morning. Um, I want to begin us in a word of prayer and then uh, give you a few thoughts. We're going to have a full uh, morning this morning and uh, just right from the gate let you know we're going to worship our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ this morning uh, and, and do the best to honor the life of Pam Swigert through that. And so I want to ask you to pray with me and uh, we'll go from there. God, we believe you are good in all things. You are good and working all things for good. And uh, so we gather this morning thinking about what uh, the next hour or so is going to look like and uh, know that we desire to give you praise and glory for your goodness in this time. And uh, so we thank you for it. We ask that uh, it would be a time that would remember well and honor uh, our sister in Christ, Pam. And uh, in doing so, most of all, Lord, that uh, it would bring a great deal of praise and glory to your name. That's what she wants. That's what we want. And uh, we desire that that would be the case. And pray also uh, for your peace and your comfort to uh, surround and guide in the upcoming moments. And we pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to uh, just begin on behalf of the family to say thank you for being here. Uh, I know that that is uh, quite an important and touching thing, more so than maybe you even realize. Uh, and then mention that uh, we'll have a, a really full and vibrant service this morning. Uh, and, and knowing Pam as many of you do well, uh, it will be scheduled down to the last detail. And so uh, it's, it's very well organized, and it is very intentional. And so we're looking forward to that. Um, we felt like the best thing to do in that order and structure was to give Gary an opportunity to speak, not late in the service, but early. And so I'm going to invite you up now to say a few things, and we'll stand here beside you and see what we get through. I think you could use that. Well, first of all, I want to thank everyone for your love, your prayers, your meals, the calls, and whatever you may have done for Pam and I and our family over the almost three-year journey that we have been on. <clears throat> and what a journey it has been. December 7th, a lot of people remember is the day the Japanese attacked Pearl Harbor. But it will forever remember and our remembrance is the day that Pam went to the hospital and got the initial diagnosis that we needed to come back for some further testing. December 11th, you, our First Baptist Church family, gathered around us and prayed for us and laid your hands upon us as we were embarking towards Madison for further testing, further diagnosis, and determine our treatment plan. Our local church family, prayer team soon grew to be churches from California to New Jersey, from Florida to Minnesota, and later on even in, into Honduras. And that's just the churches, not to mention all of the individuals that stood with us and supported us and uplifted us with your many prayers. <clears throat> As you may know, many of these prayer requests that I sent out were very specific needs at the time. And the way those prayers were answered can only be explained that God did a work and he answered those prayers very specifically. The best prayer that for Pam was that she was to remain relatively pain-free and God blessed her in that for the most part she did remain relatively pain-free throughout this ordeal so I want to thank all of our church family my prayer team that I've sent out notes to and my daughters my daughter is 
and some of the other family members are, are Facebook people. I'm really not, but uh, they use that avenue also to spread our needs at the time. To Pastors Nick and Dave and Katie, we thank you for all of the pastoral support that you have provided in the last three years. Dr. Matt, thank you. Very early on, he gave me his private cell phone number and said, if there's ever a time that you need something, give me a call. I try not to use numbers like that because I know they have a life and it's private time and all that, but there were a few times when hospice and I, we would, we would look at each other and this is a medical question and we don't know what to do about this and it is after hours. We can call Mattis, we can do this, and I just pulled out my cell phone in just, just a minute and I'd push the buttons and I said, it'd be Dr. Matt. You were always there for us and I thank you very much for that. To our medical teams, both at UW Hospital, the Carbone Cancer Center, and to the Mayo Clinic melanoma team, uh, our thanks go out to you. The treatment you provided uh, was exceptional uh, and caring. You be and, and also to the ladies that in the clinical research department. Pam was in a couple different clinical trials. And uh, if you know us, we don't just become acquainted. Uh, you become part of our family, and these ladies did too, and the doctors did too, and we had multiple times to uh, share the glory of Jesus and our hope in him, no matter what this happened, was going to happen to Pam. God was ultimately in control, and Jesus Christ uh, was providing a place for her. Um, these people, three weeks, every three weeks to UW-Madison for 16 months, to the Mayo Clinic every two weeks for seven months. Uh, we again thank our church family and everybody for the traveling mercies and prayers we received during that. Final thank you to the Grace Hospice Orange team led by Ashley and Jessica. There's really no way to convey to them our family's uh, deep appreciation for all that they had done and all the various nurses and the CNAs that come out to visit and help. They all provided excellent home care in those days. Uh, back in July, we had to go to Madison for some medication interaction issues. But other than that, their goal was to provide Pam the best care she could receive right there at home, and they did it. Uh, the nurses, Ashley, Caitlin, Kaylee, Mark, Leonard, Linda, Tisha, Chelsea, Tammy, Riley, Sarah, CNAs, Kelsey, Heather, and uh, Tammy, and our social worker, Jessica. Because of them, Pam was able to have her wishes of staying at home, being surrounded by her family, fulfilled. Again, we thank them. We thank you. I've said enough. Let's worship Jesus. Amen. Think about uh, even in those thanks. Um, <laughs> Pam and Gary have been a part of this congregation uh, since well before I was born. I'm not saying you're old, but it was, <laughs> it was well before I was born. Not, a, not only that, but I've been here a few years now, and uh, Gary was the first human being from Darlington area that I'd ever spoke to. I headed the search committee, and I uh, said so known him now, and, and Pam likewise, uh, for over four years, and spent a good amount of time with them and uh, able to, to come and visit, um, kind of recall and chat about how things are going, both here and in, in, in your guys' home and various other places. And um, I don't speak only on my behalf. In fact, I would, I would all but guarantee everybody that is in a thank you note like that uh, shares the sentiment that uh, anytime you were caring for Pam, 
and caring for Gary and uh, spending time with them, you felt like you were always on the receiving end. Uh, it, was, it was always time and time again to come thinking that I would be a minister or a blessing. Uh, and every time I would leave reflecting on what a ministry and a blessing they were to me. And uh, I, think, I think it's taught me a great deal. Some of our times in prayer together uh, have been some of the most deep and vibrant and meaningful prayer times that I've ever had in my life. And uh, what a special and beautiful testimony it has been. In fact, I thought about a lot of stories to tell and things I could say and time that I could spend, um, but I'm not kidding you when I say that this is well planned. Uh, we got a four-page document that was very specific as to what this service should look like. Uh, and one of the promises in that was that I'd be somewhat brief. Now, I, I believe she allowed somewhat because she knows that I've never been brief in my life. Uh, but we're going we're gonna to work in that uh, and really know that in these details, the way that we officiate this service and the things that we do, that uh, nothing was by happenstance, but rather in uh, a, a really great reflection of her personality. It's designed with each thing to have meaning. The organization of the songs, the way that we put it together, the times of prayer, the times of scripture reading, that uh, they were always meant not just to reflect some pieces of her life. We'll do a lot of music in the upcoming minutes as a tribute and a reflection to her life, but uh, that far in the backseat for Pam and for Gary and for the Swigert family to the glorification of her God. And so uh, our desire is that this morning, this afternoon to this afternoon, we would uh, together have an opportunity to worship. And so um, I'm going to ask uh, Heather and Ellen to come and uh, sing a couple songs, and then from there we'll continue to spend some time worshiping the Lord together. Jesus gave me it was sent from heaven above there never was a sweeter melody it is a melody of love in my heart there rings a melody there rings a melody with heaven's harmony in my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. I love the Christ who died on Calvary, for he washed my sins away. He put within my heart a melody, and I know it's there to stay. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. Twill be my endless theme in glory, with the angels I will sing. Twill be a song with glorious harmony when the chords of heaven ring. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody with heaven's harmony. In my heart there rings a melody, there rings a melody of love. Blessed thought, O oh, words 
Peace with heavenly comfort fraught Whate'er I do, where'er I be Still tis God's hand that leadeth me We have three scriptures this morning. The first is from Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and going, both now and forevermore. And from Psalm 122, verse 1. I rejoiced with those who said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. And from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 13 through 22. Live in peace with each other. And we urge you, brothers and sisters, warn those who are idle and disruptive, encourage the disheartened, help the weak, be patient with everyone. Make sure that nobody pays back wrong for wrong, but always strive to do what is good for each other and for everyone else. Rejoice always. Pray continually. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Do not quench the spirit. Do not treat prophecies with contempt, but test them all. Hold on to what is good. Reject every kind of evil. There we go. 
As Nick said before, every detail was planned out by Pam of this. And every piece of music you've heard and you will hear today, she picked intentionally because of the message that each part of this song portrays. It all points to the same message. And that is the most important message we will ever hear. <laughs> Sorry. Um, and that's that Pam wanted everybody to hear. And that's that we as humankind are all sinners and we're broken. And there was no way that we could do that on our own. And we deserved eternal separation from God because of that sin. But God, in his great mercy and grace, did not leave us in that without a way out. He took his own son and allowed him to die for, in our place for that. And because of his death and resurrection, there is hope now for us, for those that put their faith in Christ. And we are able to spend eternity with him. And that is the message out of everything that you hear today. That's what Pam wanted you to hear, more importantly than anything else. And so right now, we're going to have you guys join us as we sing some worship songs. And we worship our great God this morning. So would you stand and sing with us? And if you don't know the words, I encourage you to just listen to them because they all speak the same message, the most important message. So let's sing together. Oh uh -huh. 
let the rescue begin. Come find your mercy, O sinner, come kneel. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal.
There was a movie a few years back uh, called The Bucket List. The premise of the movie was a couple guys who found out they were dying and uh, they altered their life really dramatically, go do a whole bunch of of crazy things that they've always put off uh, as a result of finding out that uh, they didn't have much time left. Think about that um, in the past week quite a bit. In fact, um, this Gary mentioned December 7th, 2016, and remember a voicemail and a return call that day uh, noting that that was the worst news that someone could receive on the earth, and that for most, upon receiving news like that, there's many a things that you reconsider, and many a priorities that need to be changed, and many uh, situations in your life that need to be rectified. One of the things that was so incredible in all of this process for Pam and Gary is that there wasn't much of that at all. In fact, uh, steadfast and resolute, intentioned and disciplined in who she was, most things stayed the same. She continued to teach music until the very last days. She continued uh, to keep the daily journal that she had kept for 40 plus years, day in and day out, until the very last days. She continued to rise early and spend time in prayer and consistent Bible study until the very last days. That her life was organized, diligent, intentional, thoughtful, and purposed. And that there was no need to change because she had believed with great conviction that she was doing what she meant to do. In fact, as we... uh, reflected kind of getting ready for this and she uh, began to give us some stuff to think about or talk about uh, oh, hesitation to make any part of it about her. Uh, she did note something that I just I thought was so incredible and such, a, such an awesome picture of her personality. She said, after a shower, I always put my glasses back on first and thank God for my sight. Then I put on my wedding ring and think about how important love is. Not only love from God, but love from each other. I thanked God for a loving, faithful husband and three terrific kids. I thanked him for Kathy, Jaron, Reagan, Ashlyn, Hudson, Leah, and Carla too. Next, I always put on my watch and thought about how important time is. It never stops, and there's so little of it left. Was I making good use of my time? Last, I always put on my allergy bracelet and thought about how fragile life is. You never know what could happen at any time. This kind of thinking helped me keep things in proper perspective, that we shouldn't take anything for granted. Life is too precious. Then she wrote this, um, thinking about what today is meant to look like. And she said, I want to see each of you in heaven someday. So don't neglect your relationship with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. That is the only thing you must accomplish in this life. In fact, amongst the scriptures she asked to have read was uh, the two that you heard Uh, Pastor Stu Reed, and now uh, one that I want to share with you, uh, one of my very favorite passages in all of the Bible. In Romans 8, starting in verse 28, Paul writes to the church in Rome that we know that God causes all things to work together for good to those who love God, to those who are called according to his purpose, for those who he foreknew he also predestined to become conformed to the image of his son so that he would be the firstborn among many brethren. And these whom he predestined, he also called. And these whom he called, he also justified. 
and these whom he justified, he also glorified. I think if you uh, are here this morning wondering how a husband of more than 40 years can stand at his wife's service taken by the world standards earlier than she should and read being not bitter and not hurt but thankful for you, it's because of those words that we are sorrowful this morning yet sorrowful rejoicing because we know Pam Swigert is glorified with Christ. Not only that, um, <laughs> perhaps this is a, a harsh thing to say at a funeral, but uh, not all lives are lived with equal value <laughs> socially and the way they touch others, the way they affect others. I think it's safe to say Pam's was exceptional. I mean, we did the counting hundreds of music students, 328 at least, approximately, right? <laughs> Remember journals every day, massive influence. She was constantly encouraging, constantly thinking about others. Not only that, uh, if you read the obituary, you know valedictorian, graduated with honors in three years, traveled the world, played every instrument you could imagine, made the mistake of asking which instruments she played, and I think it was Tim that mentioned, be easier to list which one she doesn't. <laughs> always kind, always caring, exceptional. And yet, what I think she would want you to know, what I know she would want you to know, is that it wasn't how good she was, and it wasn't how exceptional she lived that is the cause for her being glorified in heaven today. In fact, uh, Maybe you think you're not supposed to say this at a funeral, but as exceptional as Pam was, she wasn't perfect. Gary will try to tell you that maybe. People wouldn't believe you. The reality is, like us all, she had shortcomings, she had failures, and she had sin in her life as well. That amongst an exceptional life lived, it was still not a perfect life lived. Because none of us, if we're honest with ourselves, live to a perfect standard in our lives. All of us fall short at one time or another. But Paul goes on in Romans to talk about being glorified according to the will of God, not based on someone's merit or perfection. He says this, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who is against us? He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him over for us all, how will he not also with him freely give us all things? Who will bring a charge against God's elect? God is the one who justifies. Who is the one who condemns? Jesus Christ is he who died, yes, rather, who was raised, who is at the right hand of God, who also intercedes for us. I think above all the things that Pam uh, had so meticulously planned out and wanted to make sure we spent some time with this morning, one stood far, far above the rest. It was that you would know that it is God who justifies. It is God who through giving us his son, Jesus Christ, whom he didn't spare but sent him to earth to experience this death, though innocent, to die on a cross and then to furnish the proof of God's victory over death through his resurrection. 
now sits at the right hand of the Father and intercedes for us. That just over a week ago, Pam entered into the presence of the Lord not because she was the valedictorian and not because she graduated with honors and not because she uh, took care of and thought of others so consistently in her life, not because she was so kind or so thoughtful or so intelligent, but because she had a relationship and had placed her faith in Jesus Christ who intercedes for her. And she would encourage you, just as I would, that it's the most important aspect of your entire life. It's what you're meant to think about, what you're meant to treasure, and what you're meant to recall on a day like today. And then there's one last part of this passage. You see, because you wonder uh, how you can even consider something like that when you have deep hurt, when you have pain like you do today. Paul answers that question with this, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? Just as it is written, for your sake we're being put to death all day long. We're considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things, in death, in cancer, in pain, in all these things. We overwhelmingly conquer through him who loved us. For I'm convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor things present, nor things to come, nor powers, nor height, nor depth, nor any other created thing will be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I can think of no more fitting way, and I won't lie, it wasn't me who thought of this way, it was Bam, to conclude a thought like that, but to listen and reflect on the amazing grace of God. So we're going to listen to Pam playing the saxophone, spending some time treasuring God's grace. good God and a good day. I want to close this in prayer. Lord, we are so very thankful. Sorrowful, but always rejoicing. 
that we know that today reflects a day that we consider and remember reflects a day that death weighs heavy. And as you remind us, it stings. But today is a day that we remember that in you, what Pam knows in fullness, and we know in hope and expectation is that death has lost that victory. Death has lost that sting. And so we rejoice that her perishable body has taken on what is imperishable and her mortal body has put on what is immortal. And we await that day when even 10,000 10, years later we'll have no less days to sing your praise than when we first begun. We thank you for this time to worship, Lord. We pray that your peace and your comfort goes with us today and always. We pray it in the precious name of Jesus. Amen.